Mr. Dave out here on the rock pile in Poway doing our slide, man. This is our uh, pre-pour concrete that we use before we get the shotcrete truck in here. We finish out little detail areas, set some some finish lines for the shotcrete guys so they know where to finish to. Um, that's like down in the slide we do some ribs of concrete. <coughs> and so I did a... Uh, rebar bubble part of a design on the side of the slide trying to break up our big long uh, slide structure and uh, somebody pouring concrete in there I got that all all prepped and ready to go right down here and the rocks on the pool on the slide at the bottom are pretty much ready for shock I just have to extend that front portion right there a little bit get that going and uh, What's happening out there? And so we've got the rebar steel in the trough of the slide. That's going down the middle of it. We dug out the floor, we did our steps. So the whole slide is actually slid, sitting on flat surfaces. All these pieces of uh, rebar coming up are uprights along the perimeter. We did those, made those uh, little extra footings down in there. All the dirt we ended up with, we just backfilled it down in here. And so we didn't have to haul it out. The way we did that is we used pegboard, adobes, or, or just pieces of concrete out there. What's going on, Rick? Hope you're having a good day, bro, or had a good day. So we we're just talking about the slide out here in Poway, California. They're doing a new uh, terrazzo, I think, uh, coping on this pool, which is really, really nice. Beautiful stone. And then they're using flagstone along the edge now that I get my finger out of the way really cool it had um, it had a bullnose stone and um, I think one inch tile very popular approach to these things years ago here's uh, all the real rock uh, that they put together to make a really nice waterfall this is uh, the original pool builders gardeners doing all the remodel here gardener pool plastering out here in Southern California <clears throat> in any event I get a chance to come in here. I'm going to put a slip sheet underneath the rebar so the whole slide can expand and contract separate from the pool. That's a good idea to keep those guys separate. Otherwise, they can cause a crack. And I've seen that right there where you'd expect it on the uh, slides a lot of times. Burlap on the inside. We got pegboard where we need it. This allowed for us to backfill all the extra soil and dirt that we created, cutting out our, our notches in the hill. <laughs> we make steps first, gives us a chance to walk around, and um, and then we dig down little stair steps all the way along the sides, and I do my five-foot uprights, rebar uprights along those areas, and uh, then I bend them down in. Could probably cut them off a lot of them and reuse them, but I just I don't know. I like to have more more rebar than not enough. It's a it's a lot of rebar. I'm gonna put some more uh, uh, trough length rebar sticks down there to fill in those gaps otherwise it's looking pretty good so here's the rock i just uh i'm gonna be just threw it together <coughs> um dug out the footing pre-bent the rebar i mixed up the concrete like i said that's going to go in this little trench here and tomorrow or whenever we can do the burlapping and this one will be ready for shot creek day <coughs> um see if i can walk up this slope without falling on my butt <coughs> Um, we've been working in the nights a little bit on occasion here to get, kind of get caught up. So it's probably a 35, maybe 40 foot slide. I don't know, something like that. It's going to be a good little run down in the pool. And, uh, so I'm just about ready to call the shot Creek company and, and get it booked. In fact, I probably could do that now using the pegboard again to fill in the space around this area. We created a whole big pile over on this right side. Um, I got a bucket on the sprinkler because it wants to give me a bath in the afternoon at about 4 o'clock. Not cool, man. So we took all this soil here and put it inside this area. And this is where the slide kicks up off the, the dirt and starts to pitch up. I want to give the, the riders a nice little nice little ride, kick, kicking them off. And the whole outsides of it, we just full rock it out. So this whole thing will be out here will be a big boulder. 
which uh, hard to see when it's just rebar. It uh, it uh, on video maybe well yeah it's hard to tell but it's going to be a big boulder like this that goes up to that peak. There's some planes on it, so it has a little bit more of a different facets or faces. Um, <coughs> This is the stairs going into the slide. Big one. I usually do big steps, and then I'll add a little smaller one half the distance a lot of times. So you kind of got to do your little bolt bouldering on up to get there. This is our two-inch feed pipe. I'm going to split it into two one-and-a-half-inch pieces of uh, PVC. And that's the rye going on down the side there. You won't be able to really see where you're going, which is always more exciting. So... Got to finish the plumbing and then just the last of this rebar. This is a little rebar rock to kind of try and hide the slides a little bit. And uh, you'll have a little a little seating area on the side. Oh, raise the camera, Dave. And uh, it'll, there'll be a piece of rebar on there. I'm waiting to fill this in so I can do my plumbing more easily. I've uh, tried to put it in after the rebar is all in and it's quite un unnecessary confusion and challenging and difficulties. So... <laughs> Um, this these pieces are upright steel. I can uh, create a little box around them, fill them up with concrete, or I can spray uh, rust-oleum rust preservative. Once the structure is built, uh, those aren't really needed because there's so much rebar going all the way around this whole encased structure. So pegboard's cool. You can do a lot with it. You get that adobe in there, and I know I'm going to get the thickness I need. That spacing um, between the concrete. And between you know the rebar and, and the outer edge of the concrete so I'm not gonna be rusting out this stuff really super fast which is you don't want that so I've actually done a complete complete grottles with this pegboard and when they're on the inside we just pop the wires and take them off and then we re uh, plaster the walls a little bit try and get more characteristics cracks coming down angles whatever makes it look more uh, natural all natural and uh, so I highly recommend pegboard. So I like to like to build stuff pre I like to pre pour stuff before shotcrete day, just because. Um, so I can climb over this with my boots and I kill myself. Whoa! <laughs> All right. <Ugh>. Um, <clears throat> because I found in the past when I had to do. Hey Matthew, what's shaking? Um, when I've had to when I tried to do the shotcrete all in one day, and. Um, and including all the detailed areas, the edge of the slide, some of the rock work, uh, tops of the rock works and stuff, the, the boulders, I'll try and pre-pour some of those areas, the steps going up to the slide, or if it's a big grotto, I'll pour those all ahead of time <coughs> so I can get uh, get those all stabilized. So when they do the shotcrete, they can climb up the structure with a, a good stable footing. And, uh, and I try to make sure well, I do make sure that those places I pour are already like the finished thickness. So I definitely have that, uh, um, I have that inch and a half, two inches, three inches, what have you on the pour. So it's uh, awesome. You can see the rock here, We're trying to give it some ins and outs. You know, a lot of times rocks end up looking a little marshmallowy, flintstone-y. And it's kind of, kind of funky boogie. So try and offset things. You want, you want, uh, Asymmetrical symmetry, if that makes any sense. A balanced composition with your stones and your rock work. Let's walk over here and check the check out the uh, rocks. The, these are all real rocks. These are definitely big time backhoes and cranes where they set these in. They had to pre pour this whole area with, a, I imagine, at least a foot fully steeled to take the weight of these bad boys. These things are huge. These are many, many thousands of pounds of, of um, real rocks. They're, they're beautiful, though. They're all dusty right now, but you can see when you look at them, they just have all that rich, rich color. <clears throat> you know, on the size of your hand, you have, like, the whole, the whole spectrum of colors. And this, these are pretty uh, varied, but it can get even crazier. Um, there's, a, there's a pond, uh, about a pond, there's a moat around the spa, and the waterfall comes down and comes off the edge of these more flat rocks. So they did a good job. So whenever you're doing real rocks, you got to support them. If you're putting them on the edge of the pool, <coughs> like we have down here, if I can hold the camera and talk, 
the need to have a full, full supported engineered structure underneath there with rebar. Otherwise, this guy could actually cause a, a failure of the bond, I think, a little bit. But engineers would know more about that. So you can see they've got a step there for those stones down there. Looks like a bench, kind of the same kind of idea. So that supports the weight of those two. And uh, probably with that support there, that takes care of this bad boy too. But uh, very, uh, very nice job. It's dammed up right here, these two corners by more stones. So that drops into the swimming pool as well when it's running. So they did a great job with these real rocks. Just doing a little departure on the on the waterfall there, which I think did, they did a great job. Again, at the end of the slide, I'm going to put a slip sheet there. Oh, I'm trying to fall in the pool. As I gotten older, I'm 62. Had a couple of kidneys that worked, a couple that didn't. I really try to slow down and walk more carefully because not a good time to twist an ankle and fall into the pool, end up dangling by the rebar, all busted up, trying to use my cell phone to call for help. <laughs> That'd be very embarrassing. So underneath here, we're going to put a piece of visqueen plastic. I'm going to put a little piece of expansive foam along the edge of it, although I don't know that I even need it with dirt. I can backfill the dirt up and over that, and that will serve the same purpose because um, that could compress. I'm um, going to add a little bit more right here on the right over the coping. Again, I'm just going to float that over it. One thing I try to do is finish out that edge as, as really tight as I can. If I need to on the very last day before I shoot color on it, or days, I try and put a little bit along the edge so you can't see a shadow. Obviously a shadow underneath the rock on this looks like it was added to it. We don't want that look, we want it to look natural and real. <clears throat> so, all by myself, my kids, uh, Daniel and Michael are up at another job, getting ready for a, a big recolor, about a half hour from here. And uh, so, <coughs> They will be getting that ready. Hopefully, I'll, it'll all be taped off, power wash, taped off, masked, and uh, ready for the sprayer to spray the color and make it beautiful. So we want to make everything beautiful. Life should be beautiful. Yes, I agree. So I um, hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks for checking out this little live video. Hope you're having a, uh, the family's having a good, uh, having good days these days. Um, trying to get sucked into the fear. <coughs> There's a lot more of that going on than necessary. Um, want to live our lives. Um, be smart, but don't be shivering and shaking in, in your house, uh, afraid to go outside. Uh, if you're outside walking around, by the way, you don't need a mask, man. If you're riding your car by yourself, I don't know why you'd have a mask on then. Um, there are some studies that show masks hardly do anything. But in any event, if it makes you feel comfortable, wear your mask. Um, and uh, so, yeah, um, try and be thankful for giving of others who didn't vote the way you wanted to. I like to add to my videos these days. Um, we're in this together, as it were, and we don't want to get ripped apart by uh, maybe forces that are bigger than us that are trying to do that. Um, just my opinion. Um, we all bleed. We all bleed red. And uh, we want to try and care for one another. Be patient. Be kind to yourself and others. So anyway, uh, my little spiel, if you want to learn how we do this, I've got a lot of free stuff out there. PDF downloads you can, you can get at davehenderson.podia.com. My first name, Dave Henderson, last name, podia.podia.com, davehenderson.podia.com. If this is coming through as far as the sound goes, I don't know where the, I don't know where the speaker is or the microphone is on this camera. Uh, anyway, um, free PDF downloads, got some courses there you can check out. Uh, my re most recent one is uh, pretty much the whole enchilada, over five hours of, of uh, videos in uh, eight sessions, 10 videos. Um, really tried to put everything in there. There's 79 pages in total of <coughs> PDF downloads. You can um, download those and, and follow along on each course. Everything from how to bid a job, how to come up with your supplies, materials, how to price out a job, if you're wanting to run a business, do, do a business this stuff this way. And uh, I don't know if I put marketing in there too, I, probably a little bit. Anyway, um, you can grab that if you want, learn everything I pretty much know. And uh, and then uh, on my uh, <coughs> my blogs and links are at uh, DaveRHenderson.com, triple W, DaveRHenderson.com. And I'm um, hyperventilating here and running out of air. So I should shut up. So anyway, thanks for checking us out, guys out there. Have a great day. 
be kind to one another, be kind to yourself, and uh, and smile. Pull your damn mask off and smile, all right, whenever you can, as much as possible. <laughs> so uh, thanks for checking it out. Hope you have a great day. God bless you all, and uh, we'll see you next time. Dave Henderson on the Rock Pile. Talk to you soon.